Hi you guys, welcome back to the desk corner, welcome to a new video. So some of you guys might have already seen my video where I talked about doing this watercolor portrait which is really my first official watercolor portrait that I've done and when I go over this, when I look back at this portrait, I realized that my favorite part of the portrait, the part that I think turned out the best, was actually the face and skin area. And I think I could use a little more work. Of course, you know, this is my first watercolor portrait really, so there's a lot of things I could use more work on and I need to learn a lot. But I think I could especially use a bit more work on learning how to do things like hair, I'm not sure if I nailed the flower very well, but if I zoom in here, I really think that I did a pretty decent job on the skin and face area. So I thought I would make a little bit of a tutorial so I could explain to you guys what I was doing here, since it's the only part I feel comfortable making any sort of tutorial on, and since I know that you guys, a lot of you guys, enjoy tutorial based content. So we can go over really quickly what I used here. I used my Senlier watercolors. Let me go ahead and show you guys those. A rather large set, but as you could see, I mixed together skin tones over here, and that's basically like all the colors I used for this portrait. A lot of the tan and brown colors mixed with some of the pinks, and of course some of the pinks used for the, the flower, the rose, and then also her hair color mixed here, and some of the darker shadowed colors mixed here with black and brown. I also used these squirrel hair brushes, which I got off of Amazon. They're nothing fancy. They were cheaper than some of those really fancy brushes, but they still are a pretty good dupe, and they weren't extremely inexpensive either. You could see they do come to a nice point. And I had a couple different sizes. I had size 12, which I'm not sure I ever used actually. And then I've also got size 8 and I believe 6 and 4 as well. And for the paper I'm using my Arches cold pressed watercolor paper also, which definitely made things easier because cold pressed watercolor paper is much easier to work with for me than hot pressed. Alright, so that's it for the supplies. Let's go ahead and jump straight into the tutorial. So the very first thing I did was I went in to add in my base layer and I knew that my base layer was going to look pretty flat and lifeless and the colors weren't going to be like very vibrant or well mixed together. You could see I mixed a warm brown and I was using that a lot kind of around the eyes where I started in those smaller, more detailed areas, and then I tried to add a bit of pink as well to bring the skin to life. But of course, again, it's the base layer. It's going to dry very like flat and transparent and light, and that's okay because the whole point of it is just so that we have a starting point here. So as I work, I just kind of work one area at a time, and then I'm going to let it dry and not overwork a certain area because I want my entire first layer to be dry before I go back in and add anything to those particular spots. I think that's very important not to overwork the paper. And then I'm going in and doing the same thing for the other eye too. I'm making sure I define some areas around the eyes so I don't completely lose my sketch also. And then I'm going in and adding in some of those like pinker tones. I go back and define the eye on the left side here because you could see that the rest of the area has dried and so you don't want to work on any like details in an area that is still in the drying process. You want to make sure that your paper is completely dry and not even like cool to the touch before you do that. We're going to skip through the parts here as I'm working on the eyes a little bit so we can get straight back into talking about the skin tone. So what I'm doing now is working on the forehead area and again, I want to make sure as I'm working, I'm using the wet on dry technique, I want to make sure that I'm using the water to kind of like make sure there's no harsh edges. So I'll add some paint down and then make sure to blend the rest out with water. That's what you could see me doing sometimes when it doesn't look like I'm painting really, but I'm just kind of like moving my brush over an area I just painted. You'll see me do that here on the forehead. I'm just bringing down that pigment and making sure that there aren't many harsh edges left. It's okay if you have a couple lines because it gives that watercolor look to what you're doing, but I try to blend it out a bit for the most part before it dries, and you do have to work a bit quickly because it does dry faster when you're doing the wet on dry technique like I am. You can really see how light this first base layer is drying at this point too. Look at how light it is. And you'll notice I left a lot of areas very white, and that's because with watercolor, you need to leave your highlights in from the beginning, and you have to be very careful because you can't add them in later. So what I'm doing here is making sure I leave some areas very light, and that way as I build upon more layers and more layers, 
I could still see where my highlights are and I'm not going to lose them. And it's very important that you don't lose your highlights. So as I went in for my second layer, I'm very much getting like a richer skin tone here and some darker, deeper colors, but I'm also being careful because I don't want to lose my highlights. There were a couple areas where I had to go in with a paper towel to remove some pigment and make sure that I had those highlights there. And it is a bit patchy at this stage, and that's okay. That's pretty normal too when you're in an early stage of watercolor art is you're probably going to have some patchiness. So I just went ahead and worked through that. I'm adding in some deeper reds, pinks to kind of get that rosy look to her cheeks and some other areas. And I'm just continuing to build upon. But remember that I did say before, make sure that your area is completely dry before you rework it. That's one mistake people make and it could result in some lifting and a little bit of a look of like it's an overdone area, which you can avoid pretty easily just by working layer by layer and making sure each layer completely dries. Once the surrounding areas are completely dry, I can go in and start to work on the lips a little bit, which honestly was pretty easy for me. I just used my smaller detail brush and I made sure to leave some areas light enough to be considered highlights, but it's good to go in and work on the features before you lose track of where they might be and you want to make sure you define them pretty well in a watercolor portrait, since with watercolor it's easy to get that loose look, but some areas you want to be pretty defined for something like a portrait, including the nose, which you could see me working on right now. Don't be afraid to go darker, and when I say darker, I mean use more pigment and less water. That's how you're going to get a darker look. You don't want to do that in your first layer, or your, even your second layer really, but as you're building up certain features and areas that have more definition or shadow, it's okay to go darker. Just remember that you're going to get a more opaque look, and when you want a really opaque look like I wanted for the eyes, the upper eye line area where I wanted it to look like there's some almost like dark black um, lines, well you basically need to use hardly any water at all because when you add water, the paint becomes more transparent and you can build up several layers this way, but it's much easier when you're working on these dark detailed areas to just not use very much water and use a very small detailed brush. And that gives you also more control of what you're doing because the more water you add, the less control with watercolor. So that's what I did for some of these um, like subsequent layers for the eyes, eyebrows, and lips. Once I wanted to add detail, I wanted to make sure I didn't add too much water to my paintbrush. As I was painting because I noticed if I accidentally did add too much water then what would happen is the layer would dry very light and it wouldn't look like I even added anything on top. This really goes for the lips too although with the lips I wanted them to be a little bit softer so I wasn't afraid to use a little more water especially because I wanted to keep that highlight at the bottom lip but then for the little corners of the mouth I wanted to make sure that those I didn't use much water I didn't want that to spread around and I wanted it to look like a concentrated area same with the nostrils of course like there's just some areas where you don't want your paint to bleed out it's just going to ruin it and so you have to be really careful to make sure that when you're working in those areas all the surrounding areas have dried so your paint doesn't leak out into like wetter areas. I then went in to define the nose and some areas are more like a softer definition where you don't want the line to be super harsh but you also don't want it you, like you want it to be visible you don't want it to completely blend away and mix in with the other areas. I have a bit of a harder time with harder areas and hard definition lines with watercolor. I don't know how other people handle it. For me there's just like a lot of layers that I end up adding. Here I'm just adding in some shadows and I'm not afraid to go a little bit darker here for some of the more harsh shadows I guess you could say. So with this reference photo it's obvious that there's like a light source somewhere as it's like portrait photography and it's causing a very bright kind of white highlight or multiple white highlights on the face so I want to make sure that I do include enough contrast in my picture. and. Even though I'm not afraid to go darker in certain areas, I'm also being very careful to leave other areas pretty light just to showcase how that light source actually ends up looking in the reference photo. And I think I was really able to get those values here. 
I'm really happy that I didn't overdo anything because what happens is if you lose your contrast by losing your whites, you can't really fix that by making your shadows darker because you're left with just a whole bunch of mid-tone. And that's something that's a little bit hard with watercolor since you have to leave all your highlights in early unless you're going to add anything in with gouache at the end, but that's usually only for the brightest highlights. And you can see that I'm having a little bit of trouble building up the cheek area because I don't want this to be too patchy or streaky. But I think I was happy with the smoothness of it after building up multiple layers. And I'm doing the whole thing over again for the neck. I hope you guys aren't annoyed by the constant talking in this video, but I'm trying to get in as much information I can think of as possible. So this is a really good like stark comparison to show how the earlier layers look in comparison to the more final layers. And for the neck, I'm not going to do as many layers because it's not quite as complex and there aren't as many like rosy areas either. And so it's not going to take me quite as long to build up the color on the neck. I kind of just went in dark for that second layer and you can see that it already re really built up the vibrancy there. But I had to make sure I waited for that first layer to dry completely before doing this, of course. Um, I had some issues defining her jawline without making it look a little bit too harsh because there is quite a shadow that's visible underneath there. And so I kind of just had to work in layers for that, building it up. And then there you can see I'm filling in the ear. I'm making sure that the actual like ear cavity has dried before I start working on areas right next to it so it doesn't completely bleed out. And there is a pretty dark shadow right underneath the ear, the neck area that's not getting a whole bunch of light. So I'm trying to build up that a little bit more. Ooh, that was a daring move putting in some more pink on that cheek area, but it really worked out fine. I blended it out with some water and I don't think that it ended up looking harsh, maybe just a little bit, but I think that it looks like watercolor and that's a good thing. And then I'm just finishing up by defining the jawline a little bit more since that is a darker area and the eyebrow, of course. But now comes my favorite part, the finishing touches. We've skipped ahead to once I've done the hair. I went back and decided to do the freckles. Now, I decided to add some water to the paint to make sure the freckles didn't come out like overly opaque. I made a few of them more opaque than others, but I made sure to dilute the paint with water a little bit. But I'm also using one of my smaller brushes and being very careful as I paint them in to make sure that they look uneven and natural, or at least as natural as I could make them look but I love drawing people who have freckles for some reason. It's like the most fun part for me. It's kind of a trend in some of my past portraits. I always, not always, but I often choose to draw people that have freckles because I just find them so fun to paint in. And I think it just adds a nice touch to the end result here. All right, you guys, that's about it for today's video. I hope this was helpful. If you'd like to see the entire portrait and more of like my thoughts and things like that as I was painting it and more about my own watercolor journey, then go ahead and check out the previous video I've made, which I'll link down below in my description box where I talk a little bit about how I felt doing a watercolor portrait for the first time. That one's a bit more sped up too. Um, this one's a bit more just focused on some of the techniques. So go ahead and check that out if you haven't yet. Thanks so much for watching today's video. And of course, as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye.